so today's class is uh, going to be mainly on uh, T cell differentiation. Um, I will cover some aspects about uh, T cell activation that uh, remain, but we will cover mainly T cell uh, uh, differentiation. Okay, so uh, this is just a small introductory slide to remind you that uh, this is a dendritic cell is shown as an antigen presenting cell and this is a CD4 positive T cell which is uh, coming in contact uh, with MHC class 2 um, which is presenting the cognate peptide uh, ligand to the T cell receptor and uh, this leads to proliferation differentiation of uh, the T helper subsets um, and they produce CD4 positive T cells produce cytokines which help uh, which uh, give help to B cells, um, CD8 positive uh, T cells and macrophages. And what is shown over here is a CD8 positive T cell in contact uh, with uh, dendritic cells and it is coming um, and it is recognizing MHC class 1 um, uh, with peptide. This results in differentiation of these CD8 positive T cells into CTLs and which will now kill uh, infected cells, tumors uh, so on. Okay. So, in the last uh, uh, class we had studied different aspects about T cell activation and it is important to do it because in terms of transplantation and all um, uh, you know uh, transplants need to be done under the cover of, uh, uh, of uh, immunosuppressants. Um, even though um, there is a MHC matching that is done it is not possible to take care of uh, you know getting the exact MHC and so, so to, to give some time for the graft to uh, sort of settle down and to be accepted you need to do it under the cover of immunosuppressants and so it is clearly very important to study T cell activation. We also covered different aspects uh, on, uh, on how what are the different methods to uh, study T cell activation. Remember uh, the T cell um, expresses a, a specific uh, T cell receptor and it is difficult to, uh, um, um, to find um, uh, antigens to recognize this and so therefore what uh, there are ways people have found to polyclonally activate T cells uh, um, or using lectins or uh, the combination of a forbol ester and calcium ionophore um, and uh, specific antibodies to uh, the T cell receptor uh, um, CD3 complex um, so on. Uh, there are different pathways involved um, we had talked about uh, um, we had talked about uh, the role of, um, uh, of uh, FIN, LCK uh, and uh, then uh, the subsequent uh, uh, recruitment uh, of adapters uh, by uh, ZAP70 um, 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 and then uh, the different pathways being activated such that you activate three transcription factors which is uh, the AP1, uh, NF kappa B and NF80. Uh, now remember NF80 is a nuclear factor present in activated T cells which plays an important role in, uh, in T cells. So you need a synergy, uh, a coordinated all three transcription factor pathways need to be activated for optimal T cell, um, um, T cell activation. If you just have a single one for example using calcium if you activate only the NF80 pathway often uh, T cells are anergic which means they can, they can no longer uh, respond to secondary stimulation um, that is done and um, the, this is these have important uh, physiological consequences some of which will be which were discussed in the last class and it will be reinforced again in this class when we talk about peripheral um, tolerance. Um, the role of intracellular calcium in T cell activation was uh, emphasized and the role of uh, the ORI and the STEM uh, pathways uh, in terms of uh, of uh, uh, acting as calcium sensors and as calcium channels and it is it is it is very important because uh, uh, patients who lack uh, um, these molecules uh, are uh, are susceptible to uh, to um, infectious uh, agents. Um, the mechanisms of action of cyclosporin which is uh, one of the very important uh, uh, immunosuppressants uh, uh, is was uh, was discussed uh, especially its role in binding and inhibiting calcineurin phosphatase. Um, then uh, subsequently we, we discussed uh, the role of uh, T cell activation, the role of co-stimulatory molecules especially CD28 and CTLA4. Um, CD28 and CTLA4 are cousins uh, but they have uh, different roles. CD28 is a positive co-stimulatory receptor which means it enhances uh, T cell activation. CTLA4 is a negative co-stimulatory receptor which means it um, it lowers um, T cell activation and both are physiologically uh, very important. Um, CD28 knockout mice has shown that uh, T cell activation um, 
that sustain uh, T cell activation requires CD28 and in CTLA4 uh, knockout models have shown there is a lymphoproliferation of CD4 positive T cells as a consequence of which the mice die. So clearly both these molecules play important roles even though they bind the same ligands which is CD80, 87 which belong to the B7 family of molecules. Okay. So um, uh, right now we will discuss some other activators um, and we had talked in the, our first class on, on, on innate uh, uh, on um, uh, on uh, on this uh, this uh, adaptation uh, or this interplay between innate and adaptive responses and over here um, it is a good example of that because injection of TLR ligands like LPS and CPG induces uh, um, interfer type 1 interferons um, and uh, IL-15 and it leads to partial activation. Um, LPS, DLR ligands, both LPS and CPG have shown to enhance the TH1 type responses and this is primarily via, via uh, APC mediated production of IL-12. So um, the APCs get activated as a consequence of which um, they, um, the, uh, they, uh, they are able to activate a larger number of, uh, of uh, um, T cells and it results to in increased T cell activation. What has been found in this case that it is primarily a TH1 um, type of response. Um, there are other activators, so cytokines for example are known, um, IL-1, IL-6 are known to help in T cell activation, note the, you know um, they cannot circumvent the TCR pathway but they, but they help in T cell activation. What is interesting is um, that uh, uh, there was an antibody that was found which is a super agonistic which means the antibody by, its, by, uh, by itself activated uh, uh, T cells. And um, in fact, uh, when a small trial was done, it led uh, with this particular antibody, it led to multi-organ failure of uh, the six volunteers in March 06. And subsequently, the company had to, had to enter into insolvency uh, proceedings. And this sort of illustrates the um, importance of uh, T cell activation and uh, the limits also of T cell activation that if you try and tweak the system too much, it can go in the other direction. So while I, that is why I say T cells need to be activated, they are important for immune response. However, you need to bring this down because if they, if you activate them in aberrant ways, uh, like for example the what was done with uh, TGN1412, um, then it will result in hyper activation of T cells and it can lead to consequences that uh, are deleterious to the host. Um, okay. So with that, we will come to. Uh, uh, some um, uh, of our uh, points that we had discussed on inhibition of T cell responses. Now we had discussed several molecules that were important and we will, uh, uh, we will just briefly go over, the, over them. Some of the ones that we discussed was uh, uh, CSK which is um, a kinase which is involved in phosphorylation of LCK fin and keeps it, um, keeps them phosphorylated um, and, um, um, and as a result of which uh, they uh, are inactive. Um, now, once CD45 comes in upon activation, then uh, you have uh, um, um, uh, then uh, you have dephosphorylation, and then it takes over. So, in cis, uh, CSK uh, knockout mice, for example, uh, uh, you have hyperproliferation because the T cells are activated. The same holds true for Sybil. Now, I had told Sybil is a E3 ubiquitin ligase. One of the substrates for Sybil is uh, the ZAP70. So, in the absence of Sybil B, what happens is that uh, you have active, once T cells are activated, there is a, uh, you cannot uh, lower uh, the, the T cell activation because um, ZAP70 keeps on being uh, phosphorylated and keeps on recruiting and leads to hyperactivation. So, in the Sybil knockout mice, you have uh, what is uh, primarily an autoimmune scenario. Um, we discussed about the role of uh, CTLA4 uh, previously, again uh, its role is to act uh, as to lower T cell activation. There are other mechanisms involved and activation induced cell death and program, uh, um, uh, program death pathways. We will be discussing these a uh, little bit later mainly when we discuss autoimmunity. Uh, I mean, we will also be discussing the role of inhibitory cytokines, especially IL-10, TGF, beta subsequently. Um, but uh, they will all come under a part of inhibition of T cell responses and this is illustrated by the fact that T cells are, are activated, but they need to be lowered after some time because, because continuous or uh, consistent activation of T cells is deleterious to the host. Okay. So, um, in terms of uh, T cell response inhibitors, uh, uh, there are several molecules that uh, play an important role. For example, 
uh, cyclosporin uh, we have this is something that we have discussed tacrolimus is another molecule the mechanism is similar uh, they bind to calcineurin and and um, and uh, inhibit uh, nfat activation so that pathway has been discussed um, there is another molecule known as rapamycin now rapamycin binds to another uh, uh, to another molecule known as uh, fkb uh, binding protein uh, 12 um, um, and this complex attaches itself to what is known as the mammalian mTOR or the mammalian target of rapamycin and by, by binding to uh, mTOR it inhibits T cell signaling and cell cycle uh, prog progression. mTOR is involved in a, in, in, you know, in a wide variety of effects pr primarily leading to proliferation activation. So, rapam what, the, what rapamycin does is to inhibit uh, this process. There are other ways to inhibit uh, T cell activation, glucocorticoids have been known um, for, um, for a long time to inhibit the production of uh, cytokines especially IL-2. In fact, uh, often in uh, some um, allergic diseases and all glucocorticoids are given um, and in, uh, in particular amounts so as to lower, uh, uh, lower um, uh, T cell activation. Methotrexate has a different mechanism of, uh, of action, it is an anti-metaboloid and it prevents the generation of uh, tetrahydrofolate or folic acid and it is uh, which is an important factor in uh, DNA um, uh, synthesis. So, what, uh, what methotrexate uh, does is by inhibiting the production of tetrahydrofolate, it results in lesser number of uh, lesser amounts of, uh, of, uh, of uh, nucleotides important for DNA synthesis as a result of which the cells do not uh, proliferate because of the limiting uh, amounts of nucleotides. There are other uh, T cell response inhibitors. One of the first ones is anti CD3, um, CD Muromab, and now these are, are, are used in terms of, uh, of, uh, of transplants or under uh, some pathological conditions. Now, anti CD3, uh, it is a potent immunosuppressant, it would bind to T cells and it reduces the number of circulating T cells. It is used in transplantation, uh, but unfortunately, it has severe side effects. So, uh, clearly, uh, you know, these are are not the best, but these are uh, these are something uh, um, that people have used and are can use it and are useful under certain circumstances. Uh, anti CD25 uh, also inhibits uh, T cell activation, it is used again during uh, transplantation. Um, um, CTLA-4, uh, now CTLA-4-IG, this is, a, this is a, a fusion protein, um, it uh, has the binding domain of CTLA-4, what, so what this does, it binds to the ligand CD8086, prevents CD28 mediated co-stimulation and lowers T cell responses and it is used for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. What these uh, molecules, um, uh, the reason why I put forth these molecules is to give you an idea about the role of small molecules in T cell activation and the fact that increasingly people are trying to find newer molecules um, that might uh, inhibit um, T cell activation because, uh, t because this part is a very important aspect um, in, uh, in our uh, understanding uh, about how to treat T cell disorders. So, the more number of molecules or unique molecules that we can come up and understanding the targets may be very useful in this process. So, um, among the, the other molecules uh, uh, I thought I should mention uh, two of them uh, come up, these are phenolics and two of the very well known phenolics, one of which is curcumin which is, uh, which is from uh, turmeric, uh, which is isolated from uh, turmeric. Now, both curcumin and resveratrol. Um, these are anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory. So, curcumin for example, lowers the production of inflammatory um, uh, cytokines, but increases IL-10 production. It uh, reduces immune cell proliferation um, and it is being used under some conditions. Basically, it is anti-inflammatory, it induces apoptosis, reduces tumor uh, development. Um, resveratrol on the other hand is a polyphenolic, it is found in, uh, in, uh, in plant products, uh, for example, uh, grapes. Um, um, it is an antioxidant, it has uh, several properties, um, again it is being used uh, as an anti-inflammatory agent and they suppress um, activation of T cells, B cells and uh, macrophages. Um, so, with that uh, we will come on to T cell, activa uh, T cell differentiation which is the main focus of this uh, lecture. So, one of the main things is where do T cells uh, develop? Um, now, if I were to ask you this, you would say in the thymus um, and but where is the thymus? Um, so, the thymus is actually sits slightly above, uh, um, above the heart um, and um, uh, it is, uh, it is, it, it, is uh, it starts off from the ventral uh, part of the third pharyngeal pouch uh, 
um, where uh, the, the this part emerges and the dorsal part gives rise to, para, to, to the parathyroid. Now, um, this is what is shown over here. So, you have uh, the, uh, the thymus consists of two main parts, one is the cortex, the outer cortex and the inner medulla. So, this is very important uh, because um, uh, the cells, initial cells come in to the cortex and they exit primarily through the medulla. So, um, and, and there are the parts of uh, where different uh, processes occur during T cell differentiation, uh, whether the cortex or medulla is an important aspect and that will be uh, subsequently uh, discussed. So, suffice to say the thymus is important for T cell differentiation um, and uh, cortex and medulla are two important parts and it is something that uh, students should be uh, aware of. So, what is the evidence that the thymus is involved in the generation of T cells? Um, so, for example, if a thymectomy is done which means you dissect out, you uh, dissect the thymus and uh, you remove the thymus and ask what happens if you do that with an adult, then there is, uh, no, then there is no effect. Uh, the T cells are there because the T cells have already been generated and by and large they are reasonably long lived. So, you do not see uh, a, a major effect. Um, the major effect is seen when thymectomy was done in a newborn. So, that is before uh, you have populations of uh, T cells that have arisen and seeded the periphery, um, that is when uh, the effects were seen. So, if you, if you, if thym once thymectomy was done in newborn, then you had very lower uh, amounts of T cells. So, when thymectomy is done in adults and in newborn is a very important aspect and that is something that students should be uh, familiar with. Now, um, there are other evidences, for example, you have uh, nude mice the, which is shown over here, uh, new new and they do not have, uh, uh, they do not have hair and they do not have a thymus. So, in other words, they are deficient in T cells, but uh, their B cell part is uh, just fine. Um, and uh, these are useful because, because they do not have T cells, uh, they are um, in a sense um, uh, immunocompromised. So, nude mice are often used for transplants or to study the effects of or growth of tumors because usually what would happen um, especially human tumors especially uh, if you take these uh, tumors and put them uh, in, in mice they are usually rejected and they are rejected primarily by the T cell mediated arm. Uh, now, in nude mice because they do not have T cells, um, these will, uh, will uh, allow for the tumors to grow and so you these are very useful in terms of um, tumor studies. Uh, now, what is the reason for uh, nude mice to lack hair as well as a thymus? Um, studies showed that uh, the mutation was in a winged helix uh, nude uh, um, uh, uh, protein which is a forkhead transcription factor known as FOXN and it is expressed primarily in epithelial, thymic epithelial uh, cells and hair follicles. Um, uh, consequently, absence of uh, uh, FOXN uh, results in a nude phenotype um, that is uh, no hair. Um, and also uh, no thymus. Uh, now, uh, foxin is required for normal differentiation of hair follicles and thymus which is why uh, you have this particular phenotype. The other evidence comes from uh, uh, Dijord syndrome. And now, in Dijord syndrome, um, this is causes uh, immunodeficiency along with hypoparathyroidism. Uh, Remember, you saw uh, we had discussed how the thymus and the uh, uh, parathyroid um, uh, 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 arises, um, and uh, and this is due to. Uh, the Dijos syndrome is primarily due to mutations in uh, T box <laughs> transcription factor known as TBX1. And what is interesting uh, over here is that vitamin A deficiency and excessive uh, retinoic acids reduces TX, uh, TBX1 and therefore, it is important that proper amounts of vitamin A and retinoic acids uh, are important during uh, development and for the formation of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the thymus. Okay, now, um, uh, you this is a part that must have been covered. So, with respect to T cells, you have two broad categories of T cells. One is those uh, uh, expressing the alpha beta T cell receptors and when we talk about T cells um, or T cell activation, we are talking mainly about the alpha beta type of T cells uh, uh, T cells which are which are the majority. There is a smaller group of gamma delta T cells. Now, these gamma delta T cells express they have they have different genes so gamma and delta as opposed to alpha and beta and so they express the alpha beta T cell receptor. Now, the function of alpha beta cells is, is not clear, but they, they play certain roles in, in stress um, secretion of, uh, of, um, of um, uh, tissue specific growth factors. Um, 
and um, these are uh, smaller in numbers and they are found in specialized ni niches especially epithelial uh, tissues. What is also interesting about um, gamma delta T cells is that they arise early on during ontogeny and uh, it is thought that they might be a part of uh, uh, the innate system um, and uh, um, because uh, um, they you, you see them uh, arising early during T cell, uh, T cell development. Uh, now, in the gamma delta T cells, um, some of the gamma delta T cells are, uh, are invariant in nature um, and I have given you some evidences um, that uh, the gamma delta some reduce inflammation or injury of epithelial cells, they secrete epidermal growth, uh, growth, uh, uh, growth factors and um, um, there are evidences that they may be involved in killing of uh, uh, epithelial cells that express uh, stress molecules. Uh, um, and uh, the, this part is going to be important um, because once we look at the way T cells arise in the thymus, we will see that the first T cells that arise in the thymus are uh, the gamma delta T cells. Okay. Um, and so therefore, uh, we, we need to know a little bit about them before I sort of introduce you uh, to this part of the topic. Um, now, uh, well, now, the alpha beta T cells are the majority and they express CD4 or CD8. So, they are basically single positive in that sense. Um, so, the alpha beta cells are either CD4 or CD8. So, CD4 is primarily MHC2 restricted, CD8s are MHC class 1 restricted and that is something that has been discussed earlier. Um, now, T cell, now, alpha beta T cell receptors recognize self MHC with peptide. Okay. Um, so, now um, uh, as, as uh, uh, you know it should be clear that the T cell uh, T cells should recognize self MHC, but should not recognize self antigens because it is the self MHC which is uh, presenting these antigens. Okay. So, uh, clearly you do not want T cells that see self MHC a whole lot or bind to self MHC uh, a whole lot because that will result in activation of self uh, T cells resulting in autoimmunity. So, these are aspects that we need to consider while we are studying uh, thymic differentiation. Now, in terms of methods of study, okay, um, so uh, the methods of study have been uh, usually the use of antibodies to cell surface molecules and fluorescence activated uh, cell sorter um, uh, analysis. So, you have um, antibodies to different cell surface molecules and then you, you can study the expression of uh, different cell surface molecules using um, the cell sorter. Um, and this has been you know of great use um, in the study of thymic uh, differentiation. The other are the models for study. So, for the models of study often bone marrow chimeras are used so that you know you know which cells belonging to which lineage sort of uh, give rise to what kind of cells. Um, you also have the fetal thymic organ cultures where, um, where thymuses are dissected uh, from, uh, from fetuses and they are put in culture and then if you have the proper culture conditions, these uh, the thymocytes in them will differentiate and give rise to, uh, uh, to, uh, to you know uh, to well that would sort of mimic uh, thymic differentiation and, and if you have that going, now you can put in certain chemicals or antibodies and see what the effects uh, that these have on the normal differentiation process. Uh, subsequently, you also have uh, transgenic uh, mice and mice uh, lacking uh, key immune molecules for example, um, the RAG1, RAG2 um, or uh, skid mice which lack uh, the DNA dependent protein kinase which is involved in uh, double strand uh, DNA break uh, repair. So, these are, these are important in that, uh, uh, in that respect. Uh, so, there are different ways of studying T cell differentiation, I just wanted to you to become a little bit familiar with the different processes. Okay. Now, <coughs> I am going to introduce uh, thymic differentiation in, in actually different ways and so the first way we need to look at is, is in terms of the gestation period of uh, the mouse. So, a gestation period is about 21 days, um, so right from the time it starts uh, to um, to the time uh, pups are born, it is about 21 days. Now, the first C, uh, uh, CD3 positive T cells to arise are around day 14. So, it takes about 2 weeks to first be, uh, to be able to uh, dissect out a, a, a you know fetal thymus and find out ask what are the T cells that arise and it turns out to be the gamma delta T cells. In fact, the first wave of T cells express this particular um, 
um, uh, particular um, gamma or the V gamma 3 expressing cells. So, in the mouse they are the first ones to arise and they home to the skin. The second wave um, comes in the form of V gamma 3 and they home to the female reproductive tract. The next wave of V gamma 2 expressing uh, cells uh, home to the blood lymphoid organs and in the adults um, uh, thymus less than 5 percent of thymocytes express the gamma delta T cell receptor. So, very few of them, but however the importance of it um, of gamma delta T cells is that the first uh, T cells to arise in the thymus are the gamma delta cells they arise and they quickly go into the skin and the second wave also go to the female reproductive tract. Um, and so, the first ones are ones uh, the gamma delta cells that arise and they go to the uh, uh, to the uh, specific uh, uh, tissues that they are destined to go. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, by uh, now we said that the first uh, gamma delta cells arise around day 14 by about day 18 you have the beta T cell receptor genes being rearranged. Now, remember you will have to rearrange these genes before they can combine and uh, come up on the surface. Now, what is interesting is that the beta T cell receptor um, um, uh, complexes with a, with a pre uh, alpha T cell receptor. So, it is not the actual um, um, alpha T cell receptor, but it is a pre form uh, which is actually an invariant form and it complex with that and go and goes to the cell surface. Now, this is important because the moment it is goes to the cell surface the initial the double negative thymocytes proliferate a lot. So, once it goes to the cell surface and you have a productive uh, productive expression of it you know, the proliferation stops. Uh, and uh, the other um, uh, um, alleles of beta that are trying to rearrange that is also stopped over here. So, once you have uh, uh, we, we have this going up, so there is a signal for uh, for uh, these other processes uh, to stop. And so, that is what I have said over here signal transduction via the uh, pre TCR um, halts further beta chain rearrangements it induces and from double negative it induces the expression of double positive which is uh, the CD4 uh, minus A 4 minus 8 minus now start expressing 4 plus 8 plus and uh, subsequently it induces the alpha um, uh, TCR gene rearrangement. So, then you will have now a productive formation between a beta between the rearranged beta and the rearranged and a rearranged alpha to now uh, express the proper alpha beta T cell receptor. Now, um, in uh, in um, uh, um, in the pre uh, TCR alpha knockout mice you have allelic uh, exclusion is not stopped and, and these cells are more in number. Now, uh, with respect to thymic education, so um, there are several processes first is that the T cells uh, need to rearrange their uh, TCR beta uh, genes and then subsequently uh, rearrange the gamma genes to express the gamma beta uh, and TCR uh, complex. Um, and then once they are uh, the once they are expressed on the cell surface they are they need to be selected for. So, uh, and this selection is done based on two characteristics one is they should not be self reactive. So, because if they see um, MHC self MHC molecules with too much uh, affinity then they you will have activation of these and it will result in autoimmune uh, phenotype. The second is they should be able to recognize um, self MHC. So, uh, so they should be while they should be able to recognize self MHC molecules they should not do it uh, with with a very high affinity. So, first is the ability to recognize self MHC is so you have to positively select for the T cell receptors that are able to recognize um, uh, self um, MHC. So, that is known as positive selection. However, once having you are uh, once having done that if they recognize self MHC with very high affinity or something you need to delete them and that is known as negative selection. So, you have two um, two main uh, process uh, uh, may be three main processes over here. First is that they need to express um, the alpha beta T cell receptor right and they need to bind MHC. So, whatever t alpha beta T cell receptors are expressed they need to bind MHC. If they do not do it then they die by what is known as death by neglect that is the first thing. So, upon binding of self MHC they are selected uh, um, they are rescued from death and that is known as positive selection because you are positively selecting for those TCRs that can now recognize um, the self MHC. Um, now, having done that um, you need to ensure that these TCRs do not recognize self MHC with uh, greater um, uh, affinity and uh, you need to get rid of them and so though that is known as negative uh, selection. So, let me introduce uh, the three terms one is death by neglect, 
positive selection and then um, uh, uh, and negative selection. Okay. So, uh, now this process is uh, highly stringent um, and in fact, you know almost 99 percent of the thymocytes most developing 99 uh, thymocytes are unable to meet such stringent conditions and they die. So, as a result very few this whole process is very um, is very str uh, stringent and only very few are able to survive uh, this these stringent conditions and go out and see the periphery. Remember uh, the while um, while T cells develop in the thymus develop and differentiate in the thymus very few of them are able to uh, get all these conditions together rearrange the TCRs you know be positively and um, um, and uh, undergo negative selection in a proper way and only those ones are that are able to fulfill all the criteria and are selected are able to uh, are able to enter the periphery. So, from the thymus then they need to enter the periphery because then they are then they are supposed to uh, act uh, in terms of guarding uh, and protecting the host. Okay. So, that is what is shown over here you have bone marrow cells. Um, and this is the primitive primordial uh, T cells that uh, enter uh, uh, the thymus then uh, I as you, uh, you know um, they rearrange their uh, T cell receptors and they are positively selected. So, um, so they you and you select for those T cell receptors that can bind dementia molecules and those that cannot be uh, that uh, that cannot bind that do not express T cell receptors or cannot bind cell dementia molecules they die by a process known as death by and uh, death by neglect. Subsequently, those that uh, bind MHC are negatively selected, so you remove any strongly self-reactive T cells. So that's uh, then that and, and then you have these mature T cells that uh, are that seed the periphery. Okay, and um, so in, in the other way to look at it is uh, uh, is over here that's shown here. So this is CD3 negative, four negative, eight negative. So, these are the double negative cells the which they proliferate and they go through different stages um, DN1, DN2, DN3, DN4 so on. So, they proliferate and they go through uh, different stages and then as was mentioned at the very end of this stage they express uh, the uh, rearranged uh, beta and together with the pre TCR alpha and they and then um, they stop proliferating and then they become double positive. And now in the double positive here they initially start off as CD3 low because now they are expressing the T cell receptor, uh, but there are selection uh, conditions that are occurring you have positive selection you have negative selection subsequently um, depending on whether they bind MHC class 1 or MHC class 2 there is down modulation of either CD4, CD8 and so you will have in the medulla finally you will have CD3 high these are 4 plus or 8 minus or CD3 high 4 minus 8 plus and they exit into the periphery. Okay. So, um, um, and as must have been obvious to you, you have the double negative cells which are CD4 minus 8 minus that is how they start off and then um, you have the double positives and then you have the SPs or the single positive ones which seed into the periphery. So, um, this double positive um, population is a unique population that is found only in the thymus. Um, and uh, I had talked about the different stages of double negatives. So, the double negatives are thymic progenitors and they rearrange uh, their TCR genes and uh, by and they proliferate these uh, double negative stages are highly proliferative ones they proliferate um, and um, uh, they also rearrange it in different stages and as I mentioned here by about the, the later stages the TCR beta is expressed together with the pre alpha um, uh, um, uh, uh, with the um, uh, with the pre um, alpha TCR and signaling by this uh, results in increased survival proliferation differentiation more importantly then they from double negative they become double positive. And in the thymus primarily majority of the cells are double positive. Okay. Um, what is uh, interesting about the double positive is that the proximal T cell um, uh, receptor signaling is fine, but they cannot proliferate or produce IL-2 and there are very few of them that, uh, um, that are selected and they exit to the periphery. Uh, okay. And this is what is uh, known is that uh, majority of the cells about 98 to 99 percent of the cells undergo uh, program cell death and are ingested by thymic macrophages. What is you know for so much so many of the cells dying over here if you dissect and open up a thymus you will not be able to tell that there are all these processes going on and that is because it is a very efficient way to reorganize tissues and that is done by a process known as apoptosis. 
and that is again something that we will discuss in a subsequent class um, about the role of apoptosis and the T cell survival a very important aspect. Okay, now, I had talked about two processes, two main processes one is positive selection and the other is negative selection. Now, positive selection is the process by which you select for T cell receptors that recognize um, the self MHC um, and, uh, and if they do not then they die. Now, the positive selection takes place in the thymic cortex and involves interaction with cortical epithelial cells. Now, um, what is what is important to point out that uh, the, the, bind, the peptide binding to MHC molecules you know changes the conformation. In fact, what is shown is the crystal structure of the T cell receptor to MHC complexes display a general similarity, but they are not conserved. So, the binding is not you know uh, you do not have just one structure or one, uh, one way of binding. So, there are different uh, structures or different subtle conformational changes that occur between the binding of T cell receptors and uh, self MHC molecules. So, there are um, so T cells do recognize subtle conformational changes um, in uh, once they recognize MHC uh, peptide uh, molecules. Okay, what are the evidences for positive selection? So, what is shown over here I have I have selectively I am going to show some of the some of the ones that I consider are better evidences. Um, this is a transgenic uh, um, HY. So, HY is uh, a particular um, uh, antigen that is presented in uh, um, in it is encoded by the Y chromosome and so it would be present in males and uh, you there is a, a T cell receptor that recognizes this antigen. Um, and so that is why um, it is um, um, it is a T cell receptor against M, uh, H that recognizes H Y, but it does so in the context of D of B. So, a transgenic so this was a transgenic mouse and uh, once you see um, the uh, the development of this particular transgenic in a D of B mouse which means it is the same one and a D of D uh, mouse and here both are female. Okay. So, um, if because they are female um, they would be selected, um, um, uh, selected for it. What is shown over here is in this particular one the T cell receptor is actually selected in the D of B mouse and it survives and there is selection of this. However, in the D of D which means it is the wrong MHC there is no selection um, because um, uh, the right uh, self MHC is not present and it results in death of these cells. So, this is a good evidence to show about the role of self MHC molecules in selecting T cell uh, receptors. So, clearly this particular even though it is transgenic it needs to be selected and if the appropriate MHC is not there it will not be selected and that is what it shows. There are other evidences uh, uh, for it. Um, um, so, for example, uh, CD, CD4 and CD8 play a role. Now, we had discussed beta 2 uh, microglobulin deficient mice. Now, if you remember MHC class 1 requires uh, the binding of, uh, of beta 2 microglobulin for stable cell surface expression. Now, in the beta 2, uh, beta 2 microglobulin uh, deficient mice there is no MHC class 1 and therefore, no CD8 positive cells because MHC class 1 uh, expression is, is deficient, but the CD4s are present because CD4s depend on MHC class 2. Now, similarly in a MHC class 2 deficient mice there are no CD4s, but CD8 uh, positive T cells are present. So, this shows you about the role of MHC molecule in positively selecting TCRs that are able to recognize the self MHC. Now, <coughs> now, what about negative selection? Now, negative selection is a process by which um, those that recognize self antigens with very high affinity are uh, deleted or removed or and they undergo program cell death. Now, it takes now negative selection takes place in the thymic medulla um, and um, the evidence is over here was the use of the same um, a TCR uh, transgenic HY um, uh, mice. Now, here was uh, in the DB um, uh, in the DB mouse in the female one there is no expression of HY because it is a foreign one it is encoded only by the uh, by the Y chromosome and so therefore, there is no negative selection that means uh, they are uh, they will be there is no negative uh, um, uh, the, the, the they will be there because there is no negative selection. So, whereas in the male mice it, it is a self antigen and there is expression of uh, HY. So, if since it is there you have negative selection as a result of which these transgenic do not develop. So, I, I particularly showed this because I think it is a very nice use in terms of experimentation where one transgenic uh, mouse was generated and um, to show the role of both positive and negative selection and if you do the proper crosses you are able to be uh, you are able to show it. So, very elegant experimentation to be able 
to, to illustrate these complex proce uh, processes known as positive and negative selection. Now, okay, so I just wanted to mention again that uh, in you know um, during positive selection there are there is a uh, uh, promiscuous uh, MHC peptide. So, so the ones that are selecting for these the T cell receptors they select uh, you know uh, for a wide range of uh, um, of uh, of MHC molecules are selected. Now, in this particular paper, that's what was shown that you have a you know the number of the thymocytes that undergo positive selection. You have a wide range of them, and they are able to recognize um, um, MHC with uh, different uh, affinity, um, uh, and you have different types of TCRs. But ultimately, the ones that are going in the periphery, you you don't have this wide range, and so therefore, negative selection does take care to ensure that you don't have all types of T cell receptors that are entering into the um, into the peripheral system. And it calls this this study sort of calls for a greater appreciation of negative selection in uh, reducing the generation of auto reactive uh, T cells because that is uh, one of the main roles of uh, this processes. So, while positive selection will allow for uh, for for a, a broader uh, panel of uh, T cell receptors, finally you have negative selection that sort of uh, you know that fine tunes the this uh, this selection to ensure that those that are highly uh, that bind self MHC uh, very strongly are not uh, going into the periphery. Okay, so we will just uh, briefly again have a little bit overview um, on uh, on this part um, on on the on the on the thymic di differentiation part. So, the first one is um, the, the fact that the double negatives that is the, the CD4 minus 8 minus double negative cells um, uh, in these, these proliferate a lot and they, they are proliferative cells they rearrange their uh, TCR um, beta and this uh, TCR beta is expressed on the cell surface along with the pre TCR alpha. So, this shuts off the RAG uh, expression and as it is important to enforce allelic exclusion because once you have the beta you do not want other betas trying to uh, trying to rearrange. So, that's, that's, that is uh, what is meant and then this is expressed on the pre um, TCR alpha. So, and then what this does is it goes on to allows the next stage which is the double positive stage and here they cease to proliferate and uh, the expression of RAGs is turned on uh, uh, again so that it allows now for the TCR alpha chain to rearrange. So, ultimately you will have a proper uh, TCR um, beta and alpha on the cell surface. Now, this is where now selection comes into play and in the thymic cortex you have initially positive selection where you are selecting these different TCRs you need to find out which of these TCRs can bind to self MHC. Now, you select for those. And now, um, depending on whether they bind to MHC1 or MHC2, they are going to be CD8 positive or CD4 positive. Then finally, they go to the medulla and in the medulla they interact with medullary epithelial cells, dendritic cells and those that bind MHC with very high affinity are eliminated by negative selection. And then subsequently, the single positive CD4s and CD8 thymocytes entered the periphery. <coughs> now, apart from um, the uh, CD4, um, CD4, CD8 expression, the double positives, the single positives, um, positive selection, negative selection, there are other factors that are also important in this process and we have, uh, we have initially understood the, the, the different processes of uh, MHC uh, um, of uh, thymic uh, uh, differentiation, but uh, we need to understand some other factors. One of the key ones as was discussed is the pre TCR alpha which is clearly very important and it is important uh, for binding a TCR beta and expressing um, the it uh, together uh, in the, the initial uh, T cell receptor um, and we had discussed the importance of it. Um, you know it ends at the at the very end of the double negative the, it uh, uh, then it results in the double positive it uh, is important for stopping allelic uh, um, uh, uh, for other uh, uh, the rearrangements of the um, the other betas and it allows for the the initial uh, t cell receptor on the surface which uh, and and this signaling is important to stop these other events you have uh, uh, other molecules uh, that are important for example, C kit for example, uh, C kit is actually a receptor for a stem cell um, uh, stem cell factor, it is expressed by early double negative cells after they um, after they stop expressing C kit do double negative cells start expressing their TCR genes. 
Now, IL-7 is very important for thymocytes and it induces differentiation of uh, lymphoid stem cells into thymocytes. Um, Notch is a transmembrane uh, receptor which is very which plays important roles in development and differentiation. Notch is expressed in very high levels in double negative uh, thymocytes and it favors alpha beta T cell receptor development and Notch signaling is required for the development and differentiations from the double negative to the double positive stage. Okay. You have transcription factors also that play an important role. I am sure there are much more and as time goes back we, uh, by we will be able to appreciate the roles of, uh, of uh, different molecules um, and uh, Icoros for example is important for the differentiation of cells of the lymphoid lineage and, I, and mice that lack Icoros uh, you know do not express B, T or NK cells uh, although myeloid cells are important. Now with respect to uh, thymic differentiation two molecules are are extremely important and their importance has uh, come into being um, in the past uh, few years. The first one is a regulator known as AIRE. Now AIRE is a autoimmune regulator um, and it is a transcription factor. Now it is uh, uh, it plays an important role because it allows for the expression of tissue specific genes in the thymus. So one of the one of the big questions was since the thymus expresses uh, is important for self uh, for uh, 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 for selection of cells that don't uh, see um, um, some self antigens how is it that you have all these different tissue specific uh, um, antigens being expressed in the thymus and uh, over here this is its importance um, because AIRE is important in um, the expression of tissue specific for example insulin is expressed by pancreatic uh, beta cells. Um, there is, uh, but it is also found to be important because it is expressed in medullary thymic cells and in uh, and it, it its expression is controlled by AIRE. So, as a result of which insulin uh, you know um, T cell receptors that see insulin will uh, be negatively selected and so you will not uh, you will you will be preventing these uh, autoimmune TCRs from entering the periphery. Now, the absence of AIRE causes a, a recessive uh, genetic disease known as APS1 or autoimmune polyglandulomer syndrome type 1. What happens over here? It is a spontaneous autoimmune diseases and it targets different organs. For example, the adrenals, parathyroid, thyroid, ovaries, etc. Okay. So, AIRE plays a very important role in, in, um, in uh, preventing autoimmunity and uh, it does so because it allows for the expression of tissue specific antigens in the thymus as a result of which those TCRs that recognize these particular antigens are eliminated and they are not allowed to seed the periphery. You, the other factor uh, AIRE is one important factor, the other factor is Themis. Now Themis was discovered fairly recently in 2009. Now it is, uh, it is uh, Themis stands for thymic uh, express molecule involved in selection and from here you can see these parts were taken in to make the name Themis. Now it is highly expressed in, um, in double negative uh, and double positive cells. It is important in selection of the single positive. So both in, in, in its absence you have very few single positives uh, or highly reduced single positive which is CD4, CD8 positive, um, CD3 positive um, in um, the in the thymus as well as in the periphery which is the lymph node uh, and spleen. So, um, it, uh, so, it does not prevent uh, double positives, but it prevents this the selection from double positives into the single uh, positive CD4 positive, CD8 positive. Now, uh, we need to understand that no matter how good uh, our thymic selection pr uh, processes are uh, that a few uh, uh, um, few uh, autoimmune cells are able to bypass and they are able to seed the periphery. And what is the evidence for it? The fact that there are autoimmune diseases um, uh, uh, that are prevalent at large is evidence that thymic selection is not foolproof. Okay? Um, but so therefore, we need to understand what are the processes by which tolerance occurs in the periphery. So, there are two types mainly that the one that we discussed today was thymic tolerance which is responsible for the major amounts of, uh, of uh, prevention of autoimmune diseases and for the particular for selection of, of uh, T cells that recognize self MHC. So, um, so thymic, uh, thymic tolerance is important for that part because it allows for differentiation of uh, T cells and not only differentiation it allows for selection 
of T cells that recognize self MHC and ones that do not recognize a self antigen. So, thymic uh, part is at, uh, plays an important role, but the second important role is peripheral tolerance. That means, you must there must be some mechanism that sort of take care of peripheral tolerance because every time there is some cross reactive antigen we do not want an autoimmune uh, disease, but you know by and large these are uh, these are uh, these are controlled. So, we need to understand what are the mechanisms involved in this. The first one that is involved is sequestration of antigens. So, often what happens is while T cells are, are, uh, are perusing different parts of the body, um, some of the tissue they are, they are sequestered from these antigens. So, they do not come into contact with these antigens. Um, so, as a result of which they do not see these antigens, so they, 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 they do not, uh, they are not able to see. For example, the eye lens, eye lens is sequestered from it. However, if there is damage to the eye, then T cells would be coming into contact with it and then you would have uh, a, a, a reaction, but otherwise they are sequestered. So, tissue sequestration plays an important role in this. The second is uh, and I have tried to emphasize this is the role of environment in initiating T cell responses. And there are two types over here and especially the role of APCs. So, the first is the role of immunogenic dendritic cells. Now, now, once you have the dendritic cells which are in contact with pathogens or necrotic cells, you uh, these uh, APCs or antigen presenting cells, there is more NF kappa B um, activation in these which leads in increased MHC, CD40, uh, the co stimulatory ligands B7. As a result of which T cells now produce more IL2, there are less energy factors and they proliferate. And when this happens, it leads to tissue necrosis because what you are happening is you are turning on the, the T cell pathway and then it leads on uh, to, uh, 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 to a T cell uh, response. So, this is an immunogenic dendritic cells which lead to uh, T cell responses and which is what you would want in terms of um, uh, when pathogens are, are, are coming in contact with the host uh, and, and so on. The other uh, part comes in when they are in contact with tolerogenic dendritic cells. Now, tolerogenic dendritic cells, uh, dendritic cells often are in contact with apoptotic, um, uh, apoptotic cells and these because of uh, the apoptotic cells, um, you have the activation of uh, the MER tyrosine uh, kinase pathway and uh, this results in uh, expression of um, molecules known as SOX1 and uh, SOX3, these are initially stand for suppressor of uh, cytokine uh, signaling uh, 1, 2, these genes sort of uh, they bind to uh, certain kinases, they are inhibitors, they are cellular inhibitors of these and they inhibit uh, the uh, activation. And this results in reduction of NF kappa B and you have reduced inflammatory scenarios. Uh, now, on, now, T cells when they come in contact with these tolerogenic D cells, um, uh, DCs, they produce more energic factors for example, EGR2, Sybil B, uh, CTLA4, PD1 and as a result of which they are not activated and this leads to tissue healing. A good uh, evidence of this is actually in the thymus where you have a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, death occurring, lot of the th most of the majority of the thymocytes are dying and they are sort of taken away by uh, um, uh, by uh, and they are phagocytos and taken away, these apoptotic cells are phagocytos and taken away. It is an excellent case, um, but you there is no inflammatory scenario over here um, uh, and it is uh, it's an example, it is an excellent example of a good uh, mechanism. And so, this is part of it uh, uh, that is uh, that, that uh, may be uh, occurring also. The other mechanism are regulatory T cells and these regulatory T cells are important because they suppress T cell activation, they suppress um, um, uh, autoimmunity and this is something that we will be discussing in subsequent class. The other mechanism is apoptosis which leads to deletion of T cells in the, in the periphery um, and this is again something that we will be discussing in subsequent classes. So, it is very important uh, for students to be able to appreciate the different types of tolerance. One is the thymic tolerance and thymic tolerance is the primary um, um, form of tolerance, but however, some aberrant uh, T cells may seed the periphery and you must have mechanisms by which you take care of, uh, of peripheral uh, T cell tolerance and these are the different mechanisms by which it is uh, uh, by which it is taken care of. So, you have you need to have redundant mechanisms that take care of this. So, I will summarize uh, this part of uh, the uh, of, of the class. So, what uh, initially what we had discussed were activators and inhibitors of uh, T cell activation and this uh, is uh, actually in context with uh, 
what happens in a sort of in vivo scenario because let us say you have pathogens uh, attacking you have TLR TLRs uh, um, uh, being uh, TLR pathways being activated the TLR pathways will activate the APCs which will generate a greater um, uh, a greater T cell activation and what was shown is the TLR ligands LPS CPG they activate primarily a TH1 response and that was the main uh, main part that uh, was uh, that I tried to um, uh, illustrate. The other are inhibitors of T cell activation these are very important because in terms of transplants and all you want to inhibit or lower T cell responses and that is where it is important and we discuss some inhibitors um, uh, of uh, so we discuss cyclosporin but there are many other mechanisms tacrolimus they, they, are, they belong to the same family by which they bind to calcineurin phosphatase and they inhibit T cell activation but there are other pathways we talked about rapamycin and its role in binding to the mammalian target of rapamycin and again inhibiting T cell responses we talked about glucocorticoids which suppress uh, T cells and glucocorticoids are important because in terms of allergies and, um, and in terms of arthritis often uh, doctors prescribe uh, glucocorticoids, corticoids the steroid treatment to reduce uh, T cell activation. We also talked about another class which is the methotrexates um, which will result in a lower number of, uh, of um, uh, tetrahydrofolate which will result in a reduced number of nucleotides which are important for DNA uh, synthesis. So, there are different ways by which this functions. In terms of newer molecules you have anti CD3 which is used in transplants uh, it again um, these have side effects but these are important anti CD25 remember CD25 is a uh, part of the T cell receptor it is increased upon it, uh, it uh, CD25 is rapidly increased upon T cell um, activation to form the high affinity um, uh, IL2 receptor and uh, antibodies against this have been also used uh, to lower T cell responses and CD25 was known as a TAC antigen. So, this is known as anti TAC TAC um, uh, mediated therapy. Then uh, we subsequently discussed uh, T cell um, T cell uh, differentiation. We talked about some evidences of it. Uh, the best evidence is, is the nude mice um, uh, uh, with uh, a mutation in Foxen, which results in um, uh, transcription factor, which plays an important role in the differentiation and proper functioning of hair follicles uh, and uh, in, the, in the thymus. So as a result of which they lack a thymus, they lack T cells, they also lack hair. Uh, we uh, talked about the different stages of thymic differentiation from the double negative which is CD4 uh, minus 8 minus to double positive 4 plus 8 plus to the single positives uh, 4 plus and uh, 8 plus and these express high levels of CD3 and they seed the periphery. We talked about the mechanisms over here positive and negative selection you want to positively select for self MHC and you want to negatively select for you do not want cells that recognize or very they, they bind to your self uh, uh, MHC with a very high uh, affinity. And we talked about the overall pathways and the evidences for both positive and negative selection. In particular, I will again emphasize the use of um, the HY um, um, uh, TCR. Uh, uh, transgenic mice which uh, if you properly breed it with either the, the different types of MHC molecules or male female which illustrates positive and negative selection very nice evidences of it there are other evidences um, uh, too that were uh, that were discussed. Finally, we come to peripheral tolerance uh, mechanisms now despite the great role of the thymus there are some um, um, some um, autoimmune T cell receptors that might go out and there the, the periphery has taken care of it by different mechanisms one is tissue uh, sequestration the second is uh, that T cell activation is done in the context the, the, uh, and if you if you do it in the context of pathogens you will initiate a T cell response if you do it in the context of um, uh, tolerogenic uh, uh, tolerogenic uh, dendritic cells you suppress uh, T cell immune responses you have the role of uh, T regs and then finally you have the role of uh, um, uh, apoptosis the fast facile pathway and there are other pathways the ICOS the PD1 which we will discuss there are also roles for inhibitory cytokines and that is something we will be discussing in subsequent classes thank you.